Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about focus areas for new developers. So let's get into it. So the question in question was a bit of a story. Frederick, thank you for sharing your knowledge and giving useful advice. No worries. Thank you for watching and finding some value in these little weird videos that I make. I love your vlog. Not every professional programmer is willing to help novices and you always give helpful and honest answers. Thank you. I try to be honest as much as possible. This is where why I will never ever 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 most likely get anywhere with this little hobby channel of mine. Because honesty isn't really a money maker. But to the question because of course I have one. How should I, an enthusiastic and motivated novice, distribute my energy and time in the best way career-wise, thinking long-term? Should I, should I learn plenty of languages on some basic to advanced level or put in time and energy to only master two languages like Java and JavaScript or C Sharp and TypeScript? Because this is what I see being minimum requirements on most wanted skills on job postings. I love you. Like, I haven't even finished your question, and I already love you, dude. You have done the thing that every single human being who wants to be a software developer should start doing before they start asking, what should I learn? You went to the job postings. I'm not a programming philosopher, and I don't have any favorite language, so I don't mind being a Java or JavaScript developer the rest of my life. By the way, if a company requires the knowledge of two programming languages, do you even work with those two at the same time? Or just pick one and then keep working with that one? Because I don't really get how that works in reality. Okay, so there's two questions here. Or do I have to learn all uh, all of mainstream languages such as C Sharp, Java, C++, C Python, SQL, PHP and JavaScript just in case? Or can I still sleep well at night as a Java and JavaScript or C, C Sharp and TypeScript expert? Well, I will start with the easy one first. So, when a company require or requests that you work in more than one language or that you're proficient with one more than one language, uh, the way that it would usually works, let's take a simple one for example. If you are a full stack developer and you, by then definition, would need to know JavaScript and some other backend language. So the usual way it works is that you have different tasks in your week which you need to perform in order for the feature to be ready. As you can imagine if you're gonna build let's say a web shop type of thing well then you might start by creating an HTML page and starting to work in JavaScript to do whatever it is that you need to do, if it's collapsing elements or getting uh, like some fake data because you're going to wire up the back end later to the, to the front end so that you can actually see the information and do all these different interactions. And in that case, you, well, then you're primarily working with JavaScript, right? And then when that is done, maybe on day one, on day two, well, then you're going to have to build the backend. So you go over to your backend code and you write in whatever backend language you're using, right? And the same thing goes if, let's say, you're working primarily in backend and you find that maybe your company has more than, more than one language in the backend. Usually that is an anti pattern to have more than one language in the same code base, but it's not necessarily in the same code base, you know. It can be many different systems. You could have a company that has acquired another company and so there's one set of services and one code base that is written in one specific language and then there's another part of the system that is also important that is written in another type of language and so in order for you to be able to work on both of those systems you're gonna have to figure out how to write in those languages so I hope that makes sense to you like it's just uh, it's uh, it's just different work tasks that are required depending on what type of feature you're adding to the system. Sometimes you might only be working for really long periods of time in one language or like just the front end or just one specific back end language. 
and then every one, once in a while you have a feature request for another part of the system that is using another uh, another language. So it's not usually uh, depends on, of course, uh, for, a fr for a full stack developer it might be the case that it's fi a, fi a fairly 50-50 split, but at the end of the day it really comes down to what work tasks do you get assigned when you're working in the company. If we talk about how much exposure you're going to get to whichever language uh, you have to deal with when you have more than one language requirement. So that's the first question. Second question is regarding if you should go and learn all the mainstream languages just in case or if you should focus on learning something like JavaScript and Java or JavaScript and C Sharp. I think that you should focus on JavaScript and uh, C Sharp or Java depending on because you've already been shown to me that you're most likely uh, a lot cleverer, uh, cleverer than the vast majority of us and probably more handsome by going to the job postings and figuring out that these are the most requested things. So now it really comes down to you figuring out which of those candidates are you going to go with. Are you going to be a C-sharp person or are you going to be a Java person? And each of these so choices are, are fine choices. It really comes down to if you can't figure out if one is more popular than the other in your region, then it comes down to personal preference, really. It really does. These languages are practically interchangeable in terms of uh, how they're going to develop you as a software developer. And the reason why I say this is because the thing is, you have so many years of programming ahead of you if you want to stay in this industry. And it is a lot better for you in the beginning to be a little bit more limited in how many jobs you can apply for in terms of like width. Because the thing is, when, when you have a lot of languages under your belt, that is, I mean, it's very useful. You don't have to. I promise you there are so many developers that really only know, say, C Sharp and JavaScript or Java and well, they really only know this and that's fine because there's a ton of jobs related to just that stack and there's not really any reason apart from personal interest for you for them to learn all of these other languages I mean uh, odds are that if you are sp if you're gonna spend most of your life working as say a C-sharp developer uh, and doing web work well you're knowledge of C++ is probably not going to net you all that much of a difference in your career because they're so vastly different types of things that you're dealing with. If you wanted to go and switch over to be a systems developer and you're like a really senior web developer, odds are that you might have to go down in salary or, or look around a bit because even though you are really good at web, well systems development is a bit different, quite a bit different from the normal grind of the web developer. So for you, I don't think that is a, it is a good idea. Apart from if you have a personal interest, go for it. You should all. I think that you should always indulge your indulge your passions. We, and I just raise my finger and I say, I think that you should indulge your passion once you have a, achieved your goal. And your goal in this, uh, hopefully, for most of us, is going to be to have the skills to survive as a professional software developer. Once you have those core skills, it's like taking, like it's like the boot camp of military training. You need to get the basics first so that you can perform in a live situation. And when you have that, then you can branch out and become all of these other things. It's like basic education. Same thing there. You go through. Uh, all of these years and years and years of education to get to a point where you can decide what career do I actually want. It's the same thing here, it's just the next step of the whole thing. So what I want you to take away from this is that I believe first and foremost that as a new software developer it is a better investment for you to figure out what is the po one of the more popular stacks of my region where I want to work and get good at that first because the thing is if you get really diverse too early. Odds are that you're going to know sort of a few languages but you're not going to be really good in any of them and the th that's the thing. The, the the process of learning programming is usually more effective if you learn one stack first, get really good at that and then you can move over to others and in fact guys 
the time that you spend on your first language will be measured in years. The time you spend on your second language is going to be measured in weeks. That's how much of an overlap in normal cases there is between one language and another. So you don't have to worry that you're going to have to spend 20 years to learn five different languages. You're going to spend two years or something like that to learn the one language and after that you're going to pick up the other languages in a fraction of the time. I promise you that's going to happen. So that's the one part. The other part is when we work with two languages, usually the reason why there's more than one language requirement is because there's a system that has more than one system or one part of the code, which has one language and then the other language, right? And when we work on both, it's, it really comes down to what are the feature requirements. Sometimes you work in just the front end and do a lot of JavaScript stuff. Sometimes you work in one backend system or the other. And sometimes you have a story where you have to start on day one to work in one part in one language. And then you have to go over because they, these systems are going to talk to each other and work on the other. That's usually the way it goes when you have more than one language within the same, uh, in the same stack. Have a great day.